have any other Rappler? Hi, sir. Sir, yes, you already Pia. had a statement on the survey which was released um, over the weekend, but I just wanted to press further on the issue of the 33-point drop in Mindanao. Mindanao is the typically the strongest base of the president in terms of support. Uh, what would the palace say or how, where, to what would the palace attribute this large drop and what would the president be doing about this decline in people's expectations? Well, I think it's normal that after about a year in office that people will say that... Um, uh, the election promises may not be met. No? But having said that, the same survey indicated that the people still rated the president with very good in terms of performance. And I would say that um, going beyond surveys, we have shown that um, uh, the, the, the President Duterte has shown political will. He has won the battle in Marawi. Um, we have um, substantial gains on the economy. As I said in the good news, we now lead ASEAN as far as manufacturing is concerned and as far as um, um, investments are concerned. No? So I think um, surveys will come and go. The president has once said that he doesn't look at surveys, but the surveys nonetheless are very good no? as far as the people's approval of his performance are concerned. So just for a minute now, would, would you say that the non-passage of BBL so far, uh, maybe the economic progress in Mindanao, um, do you think that these could have been one of the reasons why there was a decline? It's hard to speculate no? because the survey did not ask the uh, respondents on what particular promise he has not um, delivered. No? But I think one, one very good thing about the campaign strategy of the president was he kept his promises very simple and very few. And um, there was, of course, the war against drug. There was a pursuit of independent foreign policy. And there's the zero tolerance to corruption. And if he were to be... Um, gauge no, on those three promises, I would say he should have an excellent rating. So just on another topic, because you have this innovation to hold briefings in the provinces every week. Uh, sir, what is your budget for this and how would you uh, justify the cost given that uh, a lot of these reporters in local, in, these, in, in the provinces have their own specializations and uh, as a Malacanang official, you are expected to, to give um, statements in Malacanang uh, and the president does have this uh, this um, uh, determination to keep the budget simple and to not spend to so, so much when a lot can be done without the expense. I don't think it will um, entail too much cost. Um, to begin with, I don't know what my budget is because um, my designation is as a secretary of the PC of the um, office of the presidential spokesperson. I finally have my appointment, so it is available now for, um, for the public to see. Um, but I think it will not entail too much uh, expense because we already have um, infrastructure nationwide. If not the PIA, PIA then um, RTVM. If not RTVM, then PTV4. I was in Cebu, in fact, yesterday, and um, the press briefing there for the local media was organized by... Um, RTVM no, and PTV4, which both have offices in Malacanang. The rationale really is, in the course of answering calls from the media, some are saying, please don't stop your current policy of answering everyone, because past uh, spokespersons have ignored the local media altogether. So I told them that I go by the policy of first come, first serve, if I can answer, so I would not discriminate between the Malacanang Press Corps, international media, or the provincial press corps. I think it's equally important to keep uh, the public in the provinces informed. And sir, what would you say to concerns that you are using your position for early campaigning for the 2019 elections? Well, I don't think so. There's no, there's no election period yet. No? But if the people really don't want me to go to the provinces, I will heed that. But let's see how the public will first respond to it. Certainly, on the basis of my first trip to Cebu, the local media seem to be <coughs> Very appreciative of the initiative. Thank you, Pia. Dexter Ganibe, DZMM. Sir, magandang hapon. Sa yes, Miyakules, pang-apat na taon na ng Yolanda. Last year, nung pangatlong anniversary, pumunta si Pangulong Duterte, nadismaya siya dun sa mabagal na pabahay. Bumalik siya nung January at nadismaya ulit siya dahil hindi na-fulfill yung mga binabanggit niya. Babalik kaya siya or any update from the housing projects? I do not know about his schedule, but remember... The president will be very busy in the next few days because of APEC and ASEAN. No? So I do not know when it will actually, the anniversary actually is. What date is that? Eight, sir. Wednesday. 
November 8th. Well, unfortunately, November 8th, we will be in Vietnam, where the President will be attending APEC. And afterwards, of course, is ASEAN. But um, on Yolanda, there are very good lessons learned. Um, the delay in the um, reconstruction of uh, Yolanda, Yolanda devastated areas is simply unacceptable as far as the President is concerned. He has appointed um, Sec Secretary um, De Lusario and um, um, Wendell Avisado as um, per point persons in the rehabilitation of Yolanda. At the same time, he promises prosecution no, for the um, um, subhuman um, housing that were constructed in the de Yolanda devastated areas, no, which came out as a result of investigation conducted by the Committee on Housing in the House of Representatives. Take a follow up. Other issue? Pia Gutierrez. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, regarding the SWS survey, do you think that uh, um, part of the decline on uh, his ratings due to sir, recent SWS survey would have something to do with the President Duterte's admission that he cannot solve the drug problem within six months because of the enormity of the drug problems? Does it have anything to do with it, sir? Again, we can't speculate because the survey did not ask the people what specifically did they feel the President failed to live up to. So um, I can't comment on something that we don't know. No? But perhaps in the next survey, the, S the SWS should ask respondents no, on what these promises are. But sir, considering that uh, solving the drug problem is his main campaign agenda, do you think that it ha still has something to do with it? Well, I think no one will say that the um, um, campaign, the war on drugs, has not resulted in uh, positive results for the Philippines. We have unprecedented individuals who have surrendered. Um, we have unprecedented volumes of uh, drugs seized. And we now are seeing uh, values of uh, Shabu at their, at their peak, no, indicating a sharp decline in the supply no, of drugs in the country. Other countries are looking um, to us for um, best practices in the anti-drug campaign. So my conclusion is there may be other reasons for the respondents to say that the president will not be able to live up to his campaign promises, certainly that the campaign against war can't be one of them. Sir, also, can we get your reaction on uh, uh, Bishop Socvillegas' uh, homily yesterday uh, during sa, um, during sa event yesterday? Uh, he said he asked for uh, to stop the killings and to start the healing, sir. Well, as I said in a statement that we issued in time for the uh, prayer for healing, we join the nation in praying for healing. Um, I think the country needs prayer, and uh, we express solidarity no, in the desire of the Catholic Church uh, for the nation to pray for healing. Um, Thank you, sir. Okay, may follow up? Other issue? Choose the new. Hi, sir. Uh, we all know, sir, that the president canceled the peace talks with the CPP, NPA, and NDF. But recently, sir, uh, parang nag, nagbigay siya ng pagpabor doon sa initiative ng anak niya na si Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte for a localized peace talks. So ano po ba ang real score dito sa usapin ng pangkapayapaan, The sir? president has not completely ruled out resumption of peace talks. What he wants to see is sincerity on the part of the CPP, NPA. Hindi naman po po pwede na nag-uusap ng kapayapaan tapos non-stop ang ambush sa ating mga kasundaluhan. Kung sinsero po tayo sa kapayapaan at talaga naman tumatandaan ang hanay ng liderato ng CPP and PA, eh dapat po siguro habang nag-uusap, tigil muna yung mga ambush na yan. So as I said, the doors are not completely closed, but he wants to see sincerity on the part of the CPP and PA. Thank you, and sir. he has said it over and over again. He wants all fightings to stop during his administration. Yes, sir. Another issue, sir. Uh, mayroong, I think, uh, internal or internal problems sa Kabayan Party List. And mayroon po silang statement now na parang saying na, ikakot ko lang, sir, si Representative uh, uh, Salo. Ang sinasabi po niya is, you threatened daw po to you, uh, yung Kabayan Party List uh, na gagamitin nyo ang influensya ninyo and the power and resources as presidential spokesperson para harangin po yung pag-proclaim sa inyong kasamahan doon si Attorney Siriaco Kalalang para maging kapalit ninyo sa pwesto. Can you please react on this, sir? 
obviously Ronsalo is delirious because I don't know what power and influence he's referring to. However, I confirm that we have an intra-party dispute pending in the Commission on Elections, and I have eight ethics complaints against him. I am repeating my call to the House Ethics Committee, expel Ronsalo because he's unfit to become part of the Congress of the Philippines. Follow up lang, sir. Uh, ano po ba ang magiging linawin nyo lang sa amin, sir, ano? Uh, ngayon po na presidential spokesperson po kayo, automatic po ba na uh, kalas kayo as uh, representative ng House o magre-resign kayo doon? Paano po ba magiging sistema po? As soon as I take my oath, it's ipso facto. But it's not ipso facto that the third nominee uh, will take over because the Kabayan Congress, um, Kabayan had a Congress and they voted to annul um, the uh, designation of the third, fourth, and fifth as being illegal. Let the commonly rule on that. No? And I would say that um, my successor, the is issue of my successor, will inevitably be resolved by the Comelec, which will have jurisdiction on who the third, fourth, and fifth. Problema dyan sa mga taong yung akala nila, sila na, salita nila, ipopwede na, ilang beses nilang sinabi na in-expel nila ako sa Kongreso, bebuti nga, never nangyari yun. Kung ako ay aalis sa Kongreso, it's because I will leave um, as a matter of course, because of... Um, um, uh, as a consequence of accepting uh, another position in government or because I resign, not because of them. So stop spreading fake news. So ang kailangan lang, sir, intayin lang nila yung tamang proseso? Dumaan sila sa proseso, gaya ng paghingi ko na patalsikin siya sa Kongreso. Ako ay dumadaan sa proseso at nagaantay ng resulta. Now, kung ako ay hihingi na patalsikin siya dahil hindi siya karapat dapat na manatili sa Kongreso, what influence am I exerting? It's a fact. Thank you, sir. Okay, may follow up? Other issues, Celerina Del Mundo. Uh, delicious. <laughs>